Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Alcott channel. Sorry, Stephen Gerrard has gone, he has left, uh, he has been sacked, and uh, I saw a horrible, ugh, ugh, just maybe shiver, um, element of a news article saying that he lost his job, got sacked, and still had to get the coach back for the players. Just not nice uh, for anyone really. Now, Gerard, obviously huge name, huge player, but there's a couple of things that uh, I'm intrigued to hear from you guys. What would you do? What would you do with Gerard in terms of was it the right time to sack him? And what would you do now moving forward? Because I think you've got uh, an Aston Villa club here that is sort of suffering, hopefully, I guess if you're a Villa fan, growing pains um, where you're kind of caught between gold, silver and bronze managers moving forward. Now, the idea, of course, was that Gerard was this gold standard manager that was going to come in, take them to the next level, be backed by the transfer window and, and off they flew into the top eight of the Premier League consistency and then uh, consistently, sorry, and then from there a platform to move on again. But I'm looking at the options here and I'm going to give you a couple of gold standard managers that Aston Villa could get a couple of silver, and a couple of bronze. And the fact is, you, you might get stuck with a bronze manager. And I think that's where there's a few problems here. I want to dive into Gerard and the problem in terms of why he didn't get the job done and, and move it forward. And if we have a look at some of the uh, options here, I'm going to dive into those in a sec. But in terms of the games and the results, it all kicked off from that first game of the season. Woeful game against Bournemouth after what was actually... Quite a decent um, pre-season, which, we, as we all know, means absolutely nothing. Oh, the battery's low. We're fine. Um, but after that, I think the big thing for them was being able to break teams down, playing way too narrow throughout the season, and even the game against Fulham. Similar thing. The formation just felt so odd to me consistently. Um, problems with sendings off as well. And in terms of the formation that he continued to play, just a lack of two things for me with Gerard: A lack of identity, and I know you're going to go, identity, why does everyone say that? I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. But actually, more of a lack of energy. You know, the problem you have with Gerard is with his demeanour, it's about standards. That's what he's sort of doing. And that's quite a sort of suffocating thing, I think, at times. Sometimes you need that sort of a light relief. People call them soft skills. I think it's you're doing it a detriment by saying soft skills because it's not, you know, these are human skills. These are crucial skills that you need as a manager to sort of upward manage uh, both the ownership, which we don't see, but more importantly, actually, the fans. There is an upward management towards the fans. And I, I, I say upward because if the fan base don't want you, you're gone especially Aston Villa, because one thing I have noticed, and this is just something that I've noticed, and I'm fully aware that every fan base has, you know, their angry guys and their positive guys. You know, every team, every club kind of depicts society that we have, right? But I've got to say, with Aston Villa, and it happened with Dean Smith a year ago, it feels like the fan base is caught between the huge, huge club that they are, I guess the money that they've spent, and then obviously the results that aren't truly kind of re revealing themselves to them. And it's, it's quite vitriolic, quite often and quite quickly. I've been cheating to know how, uh, you know, normally my lot, you guys, um, I think generally the Aston Villa fans that I was chatting to, they, they were ready for him to go. And, and look, the bottom line is I think he had to go. I think this wasn't right. Um, and again, I'll show you that in terms of that identity. But with the energy thing, I just feel like he was unable to galvanise the fan base, kind of tell them, look, it will be OK. When he's sort of talking, he's kind of going, well, yeah, I'm going to be here and I'm going to fight to the end and, and I'm not quitting because I think we can. It's just he just doesn't have that, you know, as, as wonderful as a player as he was. Those human skills that you need, you don't get them just because you were a leader on the football pitch. You don't. You know, we've seen that numerous times with great players that don't have great managerial careers. And for for the managers that we're seeing out there these days, you know, the likes of Klopp, the likes of Mick Beale, who we can talk about, back off, by the way. 
do not want you taking him and it looks like it should we should be all right but like someone like Mick Beal, he's someone who focuses and he says it time and again on feelings and relationships right and I, I think Gerard kind of says it but you just don't believe him so when it's sort of starting to go wrong and fan base wants answers you're not getting those answers because he's sort of dead behind the eyes that sounds harsh but I think that's actually a real problem because the, the interviews that you do, the way you behave on the sideline and how your team plays, those two kind of interlink because if that team plays with energy, then that can kind of be it for you as well. You can be that calm figure if you want to be, but if you're not, then you need to be kind of providing answers essentially and providing answers be that on the pitch or off the pitch. Certainly on the pitch, it was terrible. And as I said, incredibly narrow all the time and it felt like a lot of square pegs in round holes you know this team here if we go back to the the lineup you know for a team that has no wingers in its side you might be working from in to out with ollie watkins and leon bailey and their touches were out wide but not really out wide you know not hugging the touch line so you're going to play narrow there right so then you probably want some width from your fullbacks ashley young and Esri Concer are not the answer. Now, let me go to this amazing website. I'm really, really like diving into it a lot. I have been for a while. You should too. It's theanalyst.com. And when I'm talking about identity, stop vomiting. I'm going to explain myself. When we talk about identity, this is a great way of showing it. So, as I say, this is theanalyst.com. Go check them out. They offer stats through uh, Opta, I think, most of the time. And you can see lots of different things. And as I was working my way through it, um, you know, XG, you can, that's going to be on how well your team's playing, I would say. And they are, you'll keep an eye on them, 17th, Aston Villa, right here. They are in right in the middle. Middle of middle the road, yeah? We scroll down, expected goals. Middle of the road, yeah? So that's not really based on style. Let's get to the style and, and the identity. Look where Aston Villa are. Aston Villa are right here, slap bang in the middle. So they're not playing slow and intricate. They're not playing fast and direct. And either of those, you would be expecting to sort of then see a sort of something come from that, right? So you would see lots of, um, you know, last long pass sequences. You would see something, right? You would, and that's what I think. I think football fans are so smart now. You've got to be able to see it. I can, you've got to see what they're trying to do. And it felt like they kind of went, well, Mick Beal wanted to play this way. So we're just going to kind of stick with this now. And and it was all over the place for a team that has, you know, likes of Leon Bailey, Ollie Watkins can play out wide if you want to. It was just really, really confusing. And when I come back to this, the lack of identity, they are slap bang in the middle. And the reason for that is because they don't really know what they're doing. Are they playing quickly? If you're going to play narrow, play vertical. Uh, or if you're going to play narrow, you know, hold on to the ball, work up the pitch, and then allow your fullbacks to be higher up the pitch. Let me explain it a little bit further. So direct attacks. When you're playing a narrow formation, what you can have, because you've got bodies higher up the pitch, is you might want to be intricate and, and go, as I say, be that little bit more direct. As you can see here, when it comes to direct attacks, they are third bottom. So they've got all these players playing at the back. I've shown you the formation a few times, right? And it's generally that has been the formation throughout the season. And you're not kind of getting up to that front three quickly. So they're not doing that. Again, I don't know what, I don't know what the identity was, right? Passes per sequence right in the middle again are they playing quickly no they're not nearer down the bottom here sequence time keep you know all of them middle 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 so there's no real kind of full tilt on a, an idea from gerard and that's a massive problem and again this zones of control so if you can see on this left hand side You've got uh, one where like your team is owning that area of the pitch, which is the blue. The gray, the gray is sort of contested between the two and red means the opposition have it. And if you have a look at Aston Villa, top row, second along, you can see, again, kind of controlling in their own half, but 
quite easily losing it out in the second half, uh, in, sorry, in the opposition's half, not truly knowing what they're doing. And in particular, in those central areas. And the fact is here is that if you're playing these central areas, that's very difficult to own anyway. And so, again, the patterns of play, the pass sequences, they need to be smart and you need to be utilising, you know, Coutinho needs to be playing well. Buendia needs to be playing well in those difficult areas. And because what's interesting and my perspective of it is probably a useful one, right, is I'm watching QPR right now under McBeal. And we're playing exactly the way that Aston Villa would want to play right now, which, again, makes me slightly nervous because, you, you know, you guys are going to try and pinch him. But I don't want you to. But what I will show you. And I guess, of course, this is in the championship, right? If we go to, like, I can go to any of these games, to be honest, because we, when we play, we know, we know what we're doing. Let's go to the Reading game and we look at the lineups. It's a four-three-three, but in particular, what you'll see is those fullbacks really, really high up, twenty-seven and twenty-two, Laird and Powell. You know, congested in the midfield. Yes, that's fine, but it's with players with like Ilias Cheo, who's our number 10, with those action man hips that Beal talks about. So when they get the ball in these central areas, they know what they're doing. They know how to get out of it. And that way, there's lots of players higher up the pitch. You know, to go back to Aston Villa, if you can try and remember that picture for a second, you're just, you're not, you're not getting that. You're not getting that positivity. You're not getting that energy from them at all. You're not getting that clear identity. You're not getting those understandings and partnerships throughout the team i mean even in this aston villa game which they actually played a little bit better you know it's the same formation 4-3-3 and it's a bit more stretched out that's where they were that little bit more direct and look to press chelsea actually in this game and so this was much better you can see with those average positions how you want them to play but coming back to these games that they've got to be winning the likes of the the fulham game for example it can't it can't be like that. It's too narrow. It's too narrow. And there's, there isn't an identity. That's the problem. So completely right that he goes. Um, he needs to go away and, and figure out who he is as a, as a manager a little bit because he's played the same way at these different teams. And as soon as Beal left, he looked um, pretty lost, if I'm honest. And the, the changes as well, substitutions, were all a little bit confusing. So the next question, of course, who is next? Who is next? Let's talk about that because there is a cheeky screenshot here. And Poch is the favourite, the strong favourite. And, when, you know, I was talking at the start of the video about gold, silver and bronze. Again, I think the vitriol that's thrown at Gerard is one people don't really feel like they identify with him. Okay, I think they can look up at him. But once he's sort of his star starts to drop, you're like, you're just a, he's used to come across a little bit miserable, right? So you need someone with kind of that energy or the answers or a team that's going to play that exciting football. But as a club, you know, they have spent money. Obviously, some of those players have been injured, which hasn't helped Gerard at all. But with this, these managers, it feels like, for me, the gold tier, of course, is Pochettino and Tuchel. And this is actually, here's a broader question for a fan of a team that's not, an Aston Villa fan, because of course you want Pochettino, right? Of course you want Tuchel. And where we're talking gold, silver and bronze, I think the realistic, you've got to sh gonna shoot for the moon, right? And if you shoot for the moon, then it's of course it's Pochettino. And, you know, Perslo has gone out and got people that have excited the fan base. And I think Pochettino is exactly that, you know, injection in the arm that you need right now. And if you can go and get him, poof, Go for it. And I think there's a team there. There's a team there that can, can play the way Pochettino wants to play, for sure. So if they can do that, then great. But again, gold, silver, bronze. I would like to know in the comments, and I'll give you your, your, your options here for gold, silver, and bronze. Who do you want from each tier? So gold, I think it's Pochettino or Tuchel. Two amazing managers. And if they're going there, they're going to attract exciting players. They also have the experience. They also have the answers. Um, I think out of those two I go with Pochettino Silver now Silver is probably the more realistic one where you, you know you are going to go and get them and again look, the league table's not great right now you're right down the bottom so for me the Silver option there's two there's three great options I think 
Beal is a good option. I think it's too soon for him to go there, despite it being obviously a clear fit because he knows the players, he knows the style of play. But you're going to continue going down that road with it being about these fullbacks, and maybe that's not the the answer because actually, you know, Gerard and Beal with Beal didn't do that well at the back end of last season either. So maybe that's not the right fit for this moment because again, you're trying to put a team, you're trying to build a club up the league. So this season again, it's not right off. Obviously, there's a long, long way to go. But I think Unai Emery would be a really, really good shout because the detail that he provides, and if you think of Villarreal and what they've done in La Liga in terms of battling against the other sides and over the years, I think he's a really good shout. You know he's got a point to prove. With a bit more of a budget, I think he could obviously buy better players. He, his attention to detail is pretty amazing. And, and in terms of providing that structure for a team to make it difficult for the opposition, but also to try and go out and get victories as well, I think he's he has that about him. So yeah, in that silver bracket, I think you've got Beal, you've got Unai Emery, and you've got Thomas Frank there, 10 to 1 at the moment. This will be obviously similar to the Dean Smith thing. And I think that is worth thinking about um, in terms of the fact that Brentford is such a well-run club. And actually, this is probably, this is part another talking point for Aston Villa is like, can you be as well-run as Brighton and Brentford? Because if you do that and then you've got a better budget, then you're really cooking. You're really, really cooking. But it, at this moment in time, sorry, at this moment in time, you don't have that, right? So with Thomas Frank, if he was to come in, um, the way they play is a lot more direct at this moment in time. But what you do have with him is you have a manager. And look, you can see it here. See, that looks pretty terrible. But in terms of the XG for the most games that they play, they're in a really good space. So he, this is a manager who can play direct football, um, cagey football, let's say. But also Brentford, prior to that, in the championship, were a free-flowing side. So you've got someone who's got the dexterity of playing a few different styles. So that wouldn't be the worst idea if you wanted to bring him in. So those are your three. So give me an option for the gold tier. Give me an option for the silver tier. Emery, Beal, uh, Thomas Frank. You know, do you chuck Harsen Hootle in there? Maybe. I think he's maybe in that option as well. But I would put him in the bronze option. I think he's a, a tier below that. Um, maybe that's just me being a little bit harsh because I feel like he's sort of lost a little bit of energy at Southampton, although, you know, he's, he's he continues to to sort of hang in there, doesn't he? Um, so in that bronze arena, let's say, I don't think Scott Parker works for me. I think Rafa Benitez, you'll chew him up. Um, I think the Villa fans want something a bit more exciting than that. I don't hate the Chris Wilder shout. And I think in terms of personality, I think he's got a lot to offer. I really do. Um it would feel like a jump, and I think Villa fans might turn their nose up at it. I'm not having to go at Villa fans, but I think a Premier League club of their stature might look at Wilder and, and, and turn their nose up at it. But I don't hate Chris Wilder as an option. I think he could galvanise that group, get them excited, get them working hard, and obviously have players with real quality as well. And, you know, for the teams that he's managed, he's always got them sort of scoring goals as well. So I actually think Wilder is one where it'll be one where his... Um, it being Chris Wilder will put him out of the job or out of the running. Harsen Hootel, I think you chuck in that bronze um, bracket as well. Sean Dyche, I'm not sure that works for me, if I'm honest. Um, and that's the problem with Sean Dyche, that the type of football that he plays is going to turn off certain clubs uh, at this moment in time. Dean Smith, I mean, should you have sacked him a year ago? Another question for the comments. And Bielsa doesn't work for me either, um, if I'm honest. Although you do have a midfield that does have, you know, legs in John McGinn and a decent amount of energy. But those are my three tiers. If it was me, oh, and we're forgetting the gold tier, because I think the silver tier is far more manageable, I would go and get Unai Emery. That would be my choice. But what's yours? If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button as well. And I'll be back soon enough. See you then.